I see people come in hurting. I want to be able to minister that, to that person. But you know, you've got to have somebody to finally come up and say to you, as long as you allow yourself to be down, the devil's going to be on top of you. Now rise up in him because Christ in you is sufficient for you to master anything that comes against you. And I'm going to show you that tonight in the Bible. See, so you've got to, yeah, it's a time to cry, but not 24 7. Don't be mad 24 7. There's things in your life you can't change, there's things in your marriage you can't change. <coughs> Are you going to let it just beat you down? Preach it, Bob. I believe it will. I'm saying you've got to rise up on the inside, and I am not going to let my kids drag me down. I ain't going to let my wife drag me down. I'm not going to let the church drag me down. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to be happy in God, for I am in Christ, and I am more than a conqueror, and He is sufficient in me, and I'm sufficient in Him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. <coughs> when I used to go to, when I used to have to work, and I'd go to work, people drag into work. My goodness, what happened to him last night? Must have got run over with an 18-wheeler. And I come in, oh, what a nice day this is. Hallelujah. Man, don't talk too loud. My head's about to pop open. How many of you meet people like that? I mean, they just... If they, if they smile, their face would crack. All the makeup would fall on the floor. The wrinkles would begin to show. Oh, I've, I've, I've had devils beating on me. And, 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 and the psalmist said, In my affliction, I praise the Lord. That's when you praise the Lord more than any time else. <coughs> The devil don't like you to praise the Lord. Well, that's just too bad, because I'm going to praise the Lord. I praised the Lord when I didn't have a dime in my pocket. I praised Him then, and I praise Him now that I got a dollar in my pocket. It's around here somewhere. Well, anyway, we won't go that way. Now, I know if you're down... And you say, well, he don't have any compassion. Don't know, he knows I'm hurting. Folks, let me tell you something. I went through a period of time when the devil was pressuring my head on the top of my head. It felt like an 18-wheeler was on it. I'd have to come home many times, and I'd praise God, and I, I did everything I could. I'd come home, and I'd let Susan lay her little gentle hand right on my head. And she'd say so quietly and so lady like devil leave him alone come out of him right now whoa thank you jesus hallelujah that's right and many a time many a time let me tell you something maintaining maintaining our christian life is somewhat many times a big job have you found that to be true you got all this nice house you got this nice yard <clears throat> How many hours does it take to maintain it? Somebody tell me. 24-7, just about that. Well, let me tell you something. To maintain your Christian life, you're going to have to learn these principles. You're going to have to learn to rejoice when you have nothing and rejoice when you have abundance. All right, let's get into the Scriptures and see if that's Scripture. All right, are we ready? All right. <laughs> Look at verse 2. I'm sorry, verse 5. Verse 5. <clears throat> and we're going to go quick here because time's moving. <laughs> Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness, your considerationness, your forbearing spirit. Now, I want, to, I want to show you something here. The Lord is near. He is coming soon. I want to spend a little time on that last part of that verse. The Lord is near. He is coming soon. <clears throat> In the first century church, they thought the Lord was coming back real soon. 
You'll see that all through the scriptures, by the way. This, but this is what they thought. And that's what they preached. Notice, he is coming soon. Now, the Lord is near. You can take that two ways. The Lord is near to reveal himself in the rapture. Or he's near with you and he will never leave you. But I personally think that it is talking about the Lord is near. In other words, he's coming real quick like. Because the next is he is coming soon. See, it's all right in there. And we say, now, if that was true 2,000 years ago, whoo, how true it is today when we say it, okay? We won't, we won't go that way tonight. Let's go to the next verse. But notice this. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Now, that's what the Lord tells us to do. Now, this is something that he wants us to do. <coughs> How many's ever seen a worry wart? How many is a worry wart? Confession is good for the soul. <laughs> See, you've got to learn not to be a worry wart. Because you'll become a wart. Look what it says. Don't be anxious about anything. But in every circumstance, in everything, by prayer and petition. In other words, here's what he's saying. Listen, you're in this circumstance. Uh, you are in this uh, <coughs> thing here. Listen, just start praying. Just pray. Make your definite request. Make your petition known to the, to the Lord. And notice this, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, and continue to make your wants known to God. Now, that's what we're to do in that situation. Go to the next verse. Now, if we do verse 6, what will God do? Now, we're saying God come on the scene. If we do our part, what was our part? Turn back to our part again. Make sure we understand our part. The next verse, backwards. All right, he tells us, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Woo! Now, we've all experienced that, haven't we? We've all had anxiety. We've all worried about this. We're every circumstances. We react to everything like that's the end of the world. I won't be able to make it to tomorrow. We just react so bitterly. And that stirs our heart at blood vessels. Our heart goes bumpity bump bump. The devil comes in there and we become a nervous wreck. And we end up down at the hospital in the emergency room. How many has been there? <laughs> tell it like it is, Bob. I got to tell it like it is because you know it's true. So God is concerned about our health. He's concerned. Listen. How big is your God anyway? Well, my God is able to handle everything. Well, suppose I lose everything. So, how much are you going to take to heaven anyway? Say that right there. You ain't taking nothing. When someone says, I ain't going there. Well, stay around. You'll stink up the place because you won't have no breath in you. <laughs> Hello? How far are we living outside of the Christian arena? Now, I mean, you may be right in the center. I hope that I think some of you are pretty close. Some of us are pretty close to it. But how far are you still in the world with your thinking, oh my, what am I going to do? Oh. I could spend hours talking about situations that Susan and me have been in. I could talk about hours at this church from the beginning of its birth, that we have been involved in and trusted God in it all, and God always delivered us and set us free. I like the, th the, the, uh, the Hebrew children. Hallelujah. They're going to be thrown into the fire. That's a circumstance. How many of us in here, somebody comes in here and says, I want everybody to line up against that wall. I'm going to shoot all of you. I'd be the first one by the wall, wouldn't you? Besides, you, I mean, you'd be the first one. How many would rejoice in that?
<laughs> but rejoice in everything. Oh, we're going to get shot. Oh, goody, goody. I see y'all in heaven. I, I think it's about time for breakfast anyway. We'll make it for breakfast. See, you've got to program your mind because you will always worry about everything. <coughs> think this through now. This is heavy. I'm about to say something heavy. Worrying about it does not add or solve the problem. If it does, we'd have a lot of our problems solved, wouldn't we? No. So you mean you can live in this life and not worry? The Bible says don't worry about anything. My wife just passed away. Rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. My husband just passed away. <laughs> rejoice in everything. Because, see, I've, I've read the end of the book. If you haven't read the end of the book, you, you, you're going to worry. Because, see, we win. Do you understand that? This is just a, a vapor. A, a little a mark on the wall. See, our God is big. We serve a big God. And He's arranged everything. And if you die and I die, we ain't going to ever die. Our body's just going to quit breathing. So we can rejoice. What is there to fear? Tell me. What is there to fear? Now, let's move on. The time is passing by. <laughs> Boy, this is good, isn't it? All right, I'm, I know I'm shaking the bushes. Sometimes I need to be shaken. <clears throat> I'm here to help you, not hinder you. All right, now, once we've done our part, look at there. Now, the God of peace shall be, your, be yours. The peace of God shall be yours at that tranquil state of a soul. The soul is personally calm, peace, tranquility. Now that you did your part in verse 6, now God's doing his part in verse 7, and the God of peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul. Your soul is in perfect harmony, peace, assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God or being con and being content with its earthly lot. Of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Perfect peace. When Susan went through this operation, I was in perfect peace. Tuber in her nose, all these things stuck inside of her. Perfect peace. And she was in perfect peace. And she's laying there and scriptures going around in her mind. God's just showing the scriptures. Don't worry about anything. See, that, 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 that's available. Either I'm preaching the gospel or I'm preaching something ain't nobody ever heard. Hmm. I don't think I've ever heard this gospel before. Well, it's there it is. Look what it says. Well, we've already read that. God, the God of peace. <laughs> you couldn't worry if you had to. See, I know what it is to have fear. I know what it is to worry. I know what it is to anxiety. I went through my portion of anxiety where my chest would tighten up and my heart and <clears throat> anxiety, and I feel like I was going to fall over. I went, I'm going through it all, all the manifestations of it. I went through all of the, the valley of death. But I got into the Scriptures, and I, get, I begin to say, Lord, I can only do this by your strength. So I see what you want me to do. I'm going to do what you want me to do, and I know you are faithful, and you will keep me, and I'll be content with the early lot that I'm in. I had to learn that. I know Willie has. Mike has. 
This James has, I know many of you have. Are you content with the lot you have right now? Hmm? Well, it could be better. I know it, it can always be better. But that ain't what he's talking about. Look at what he's talking about. Let's move on and get the full gist of the scriptures now. Go to the next verse. All right. Now for the rest, brother, whatever is true, whatever is wor worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, God will think on those things. <laughs> Who will think on those things? Let me see your hands. Woo! That's your job. And if you don't, can I say something in love? Whoosh. That's just the way it is. You'll be down and out 24-7. You won't be able to praise the Lord. You won't be able to rejoice. You won't feel that security in God's love. You see what I'm talking about? So we, what we do, we do what God tells us to do. Lord, what do you want me to do? There it is. Right there on if there's any, uh, any other virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, do not think on it. <clears throat> think on your problem. Think on your misery. Think on what people are doing to you. Think what people ain't doing for you. Think on oh, everybody. It become a nervous wreck. It will go down to the hospital and visit you. And you're there uh, with the cover over your head. What's wrong, sister? They're after me. <laughs> Listen, how many times I have gone down there, and that's exactly what the problem is. Pray for me. I ain't going to pray for you. Won't do no good. You got to change your mind and do what the Bible says. Think. On what he says right there. Think on and wait and take account of these things. Fix your minds on your problems. Huh? I say that wrong? Think on what? Those things. Check yourself. Every time I read the scripture, I check yourself. I say, Susan, now we going over this. Now let's be honest with ourselves. Enough of that uh, hypocrisy. Enough of that. Uh, uh, bah! God, I want to know the truth. I want to do the truth. That should be a hunger in your heart. Now, let's check this off and see. Are you doing this? Yeah. Are you doing this? Eh. Are you doing this? Yeah. I need to do this a little bit better. Lord, give me strength to do. Be more conjured. To the dog. I didn't mean to kick him. Be kind to Pastor Bob. Wow. Let's go to the next verse. Whoop. Practice what you have learnt and received and heard, and heard and seen in Pastor Bob or Apostle Paul and model your way of living on it. And the God, the, ooh, look at that. You do your part and halfway through that verse of scripture and the God of peace of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. Come on, church. I dare you all to get up here and let's do one. Come on. Uh, oh yeah, you're frozen to those seats. Let's read that again. That's powerful. 
practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in Pastor Bob or the Apostle Paul and model your way of living and thinking on it. And what if you do that, what will God do? Come here. The God of peace, of untroubled and undisturbed well-being will be with you. Simple, not complicated, but it's got to be a 24-7 operation. Now I'm going to stop here for a moment. How many of you know that I have lived for 82 years? Have I always practiced that? No. That's why I'm convinced I can pass it on to you until you do what the scriptures tell you to do, you'll be disturbed, you'll be miserable, you're not going to be happy. Oh, you might be happy, you know, dinner's ready, and you sit down, and you're happy, and then when you eat that, you're not happy. See, maintaining our Christian life, we're not talking about heaven and, and hell here. Uh, we're talking about living a life that is life, the abundant life, God's part and our part. And I'll guarantee, including myself, if I'm missing the mark, it'll always be your fault. Where, 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 where did we read that at, Mike? In the garden, right? It was the devil, that wife you gave me. No, the buck stops right here with you and me. Well, Lord, you've done your part. I know where the problem is. It's with Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry, Willie. <laughs> Just keep passing it. Uh, <clears throat> you know I'm speaking truth, but I'm speaking it in love. Now, let's go to the next verse. <laughs> Verse 10. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Verse 10. I was made very happy in the Lord. Now, who was made happy? Paul. That now you have revived your interest in my welfare. Now, he changed the subject now, and he's talking about himself, and he's talking about the Philippians, and you are reviving your concern about me, uh, your apostle. After so long a think, so long of a time, you were indeed thinking of me, but you had no opportunity to, to show it. <laughs> Excuse me. Isn't that true in our very uh, lives so many times that, that we want to do things for people, but the circumstances just don't seem to be right? You know what I mean? And uh, Paul is way somewhere, and they're way somewhere, and they couldn't they couldn't uh, minister to him, and uh, and then he goes on. All right, let's read on a little bit further here, and Paul's going to begin to show a little bit about his life. He's going to give a little bit of testimony of his life. Now that I am implying, not that I am implying that I was in any personal want. Wow, Paul, that that's pretty good, isn't it? For I have learned. How to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I'm in. Wow, Paul, that's a good testimony. And of course, we know that Paul was in jail. He was beaten up, shipwrecked. Boy, he had some problems. But he had learned. People have problems. <clears throat> Let's move on a little bit, and then I, then I want to show you a demonstration of something. Let's go to the next verse. I know how to be a base and live humbly in straighted, in straighted circumstances. And I know also how to enjoy plenty. And live in abundance. 
I have learned. Now notice that word, underline, underline that word learned. In any and all circumstances, the secret of complaining and finding fault. Oh, sorry. Secret of facing every situation, whether well fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare, or going without and being in want. I'm happy. I can rejoice in the Lord. Is what Paul is saying. Go to the next verse. Now he's learned this. We're learning that. I have strength oh, for all things in Christ. How am I going to go through this situation? I've never been in this situation before. I don't think I can make it. Now I'll remind you what the Apostle Paul said. God's grace is sufficient. God's grace manifests itself in strength. The more pressure is put on you, the more strength and grace you will find in God to endure whatever you have to endure and be happy and rejoice. Now you're really connected to God. Now you are receiving strength and power <coughs> from God to go through that situation. Hello? Many times God will not remove the situation, but He'll give you the grace and the strength and the power to a, be able to hold up under it all and continue on with your life. And it's like it ain't even bothering you. And everybody's looking and saying, I don't know how they take it. I'll tell you how you take it. God's poured in the grace. The grace. The grace. The anointing, the power of God, the sufficiency that's in Christ is in you. And you are in Christ. Therefore, you are in that sufficiency to do whatever God tells you to do. And you can do it with a smile. You can do it with a good spirit. You can do it with the spirit of Christ. You know how our Lord bared the cross? God poured in the strength. God poured in the grace. God was in Christ, reconciling the world back to himself. Look what it says. I am ready for, let me back up. I have strength for all things in Christ. Everybody say that. I have strength for all things in Christ. All right. Who empowers me. I am ready for anything. And equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. What's the problem? Now, to activate that, you've got to accept it by faith. You've got to Speak it, and speak what you believe. Remember, we were talking about that scripture. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Put it on the board real quick. If it ain't 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Then we'll come back to this. That ain't the one. All right, 2 Corinthians 4.13. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had. Now find out who he is. Somebody tell me who he is. The psalmist. Psalm 116 or something like that, verse 10. All right, see, this is not a capital H, so we know it's not the Lord. So yet we have the same spirit of faith as the psalmist had who wrote... So we know it's a psalmist who wrote. Somebody wrote it. I have believed, and therefore have I spoken. We too believe, and therefore speak. 
Next verse. We speak what we believe. And what do you believe? I believe that God will give me all sufficiency to do what he tells me to do. Assure that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will raise us up also with Jesus and bring us along with you into his presence. That sounds like the rapture there, don't it? Look at it. Assure that he who raised up the Lord Jesus, we're talking about when Christ died, when he was in the tomb, God raised him up, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. Raise us up also with Jesus and bring us along with you into his presence. That's the gathering of the saints, the gathering of the church. He will gather us all together and bring us all together in his presence. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's in our death uh, time, of what, but when the rapture comes. All right, let's go back to Philippians. And what verse are we on? Philippians chapter 4. Verse 11. And we'll quit verse 13. All right. Now that I am, not that I'm implying that I was in any personal want. Now you go back and you study his life. He didn't have a car. I don't think he had a donkey. What did the Apostle Paul have? A lot of trouble from his brethren, the Jews, the Gentiles, the Romans, some of the Christian brothers, the Judaizers, you name it. And he says, not that I am implying that I was in any personal one, for I have learned. Oh, that word keeps popping up. Learned. So don't be discouraged. We're learning how to be content satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state that I am. Verse 12. Now he learned that. And he goes on to say, I think we've gone over that, haven't we? We've already gone to the next verse. Let's stop with verse 13. Okay, here we go. Now notice what he says. This is what he believes. This is what he's experienced. He says, I have strength. Well, Paul, I want to know where you got it. Because I need some of it. Where did he get it, you think? In Christ. In Christ. For all things, I have strength for all things. I've heard people say, well, I just, I, I just can't do that. I, 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 all, I, 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 I. Hogwash. Hogwash. How many know what hogwash is? All right. You, I don't really know what it is myself. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. <laughs> I have strength for all things in Christ. No wonder he says rejoice that you're in what? Christ. No wonder he says rejoice that you're in Christ. Because in him, that's where your strength comes from to bear everything that you have to bear. No wonder he's rejoicing that he's in Christ. Because it's in Christ that you have sufficient grace and mercy to endure whatever you have to endure until you go home to be with the Lord. Who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Read the scripture when you go home. I got five more minutes, and I'm going to share this with you. Many times we pray, Lord, get me out of this, and I've prayed that before. No, I'm going to let you stay in that situation because I'm going to purify you in that. And, 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 and you're going to learn, like Paul learned, to be content in that circumstance and in that situation or in that relationship. 
because I'm going to use all of that for you to learn that you can make it by the Lord's strength that I'm going to infuse into you. And so whatever circumstance we are in, Lord, you said I am sufficient. Now how do you draw that? You talk to the Lord. You, 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 you speak what he said. You said, Lord, you'd strengthen me. Paul says, I, I have strength for all things. Well, how did you get that strength, Paul? In Christ. Are you in Christ? Then you are that person that can receive that strength. And Paul says, now that he has empowered me, I am ready in that circumstance. The grace is there for me. Notice this. The situation hasn't changed, but it don't bother me no more. That thorn in the flesh don't bother me no more. Because the grace has power to strengthen you when the enemy hits you with that thorn. Hmm. I didn't even feel it. He didn't remove the thorn. But he gave Paul the grace, the strength, that inner strength. I was reading the uh, book on martyrs. Fox. You ever heard of Fox Martyrs? <coughs> I'll get that later. I can't. Be. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> I tell Susan, would you tie that for me? <laughs> All right. He was a pastor. This one testimony, he was a pastor. And the communism, they beat him in the face. I mean, beat him, just kept beating him, hitting him and beating him. You know what he said? And he wrote the book. I didn't even feel it. My face became as hard as a brick. See, that's God's grace, God's power to take care of his children. The fire didn't even burn them. Where did that come from? Where is that at? Is that in the scriptures? But the fourth man was in there. See, you're in Christ. You're in the fourth man. The fourth man is with you, with me. See, we get this locked down in our heart. We become as bold as a lion. Now, I'm going to give you a little illustration. How do you minister to somebody? Would you, would you be the subject? All right, come on up. Let him come up. Now, here's what you've got to understand. Sometimes we don't understand. We say, my light, I want my light to shine. Somebody comes to you and tells them all their, all their problems. He's telling me all his problems. See, but see, I, I, I don't take it. I take it. He's, he's loading me down. with all. Look at it. He's loading me down. All these things. That's what you're here for. To say, brother, okay, no problem. I understand. Let's pray. Don't run over. Hey, did you hear what the brother said? The spit yeah. Sorry. How many people come to you? Would you do me a favor? Time I shoot, brother. <laughs> How many? See, I'm teaching you to minister now. People will come to you and they'll say, so-and-so in the church did this and said that about me. Now, we've all been there, haven't we? Huh? You know what I'm talking about? No. Let's pray about this, brother. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, that, that, that he's not taking that personal. Thank you, Father. I give you the praise and the glory. Thank you, Lord. He's strong. He's, he's sufficient in Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with love. Thank you for this man of God. Thank you, Father. All is well. He forgives. Brother, say, I forgive. I forgive. That person. That person. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. May sit down. <laughs> That's what you do. You go to Susan, and let's pray. Now, we have people come to me. And I had somebody not just this week, and they were all loaded down. With, I said, uh, he said, it's all around me. I, listen, you're the light. Turn the lamp up a little bit and just right in the middle of all of that. 
it's a family situation. That's your time to let your light shine. Come on, let's pray for the family. Come on, the devil ain't going to destroy this family. Come on, we're not going to talk about one another. No, we're brothers and sisters. No, the devil ain't going to come into this family. No, no, no. Now, you don't have to talk that loud. But I do it just to get the point across. You could say in kind words, folks, the devil has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. And he's trying to destroy this family. But I tell you what, we got how many Christians we have here? Let's see your hands. All right, everybody come on up here. We're going to pray for the family. Come on, come on, right now, come on. Come on, we're going to put some. yeah, we're going to pray, man. We ain't going to let the devil tear his family up. We've, we've been around a long time. You know, how many has ever heard, get in the circle right here, and we're going to finish here in about one minute. How many in here remembers the, the um, hillbillies, uh, I call them hillbillies, the mountain people in North Carolina, and for three or four centuries, generations, they have been fighting, and finally one person stands up and says, why are we all fighting? Huh? They don't even know why they've been fighting. Grand, great, great, great grandfather got teed off at great, great, great grandfather across the the other mountain there because one of them stole thought they stole their hog or something and they started shooting at one another and been shooting each other for three generations and finally somebody stood up and said what are we sh killing each other for why why are we i mean you understand what i'm talking about let's just settle the thing right now come on i'll just say everybody say lord, lord. I, forgive. I forgive and i take authority, I take authority. over every spirit over that every spirit. tries to come in and break unity in our family. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's go to Hardy's and get a hearty burger. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. God bless you.